Glenn Adamson, Martha Kirby and Rob Fowler, thank you for your time and thank you for Bat Out of Hell. I just said, uh, I'm buggered watching the show, but you guys are in it, so you must be buggered doing that night after night. Such a high energy show. And I was most surprised that even at the halfway mark at interval, you've blown your load completely. <laughs> it's a huge... Yeah, we are. It's a huge show. Where do you get the energy from? Lots of food um, and lots of practice, I think, yeah. So we've gradually got more and more stamina as we've gone yeah. along, I think. How many shows is it for you now? Oh, except for from the start, gosh. Uh, yeah, in the hundreds, maybe yeah, 300. Yeah, definitely. So. Yeah. 200 odd, I reckon. <laughs> Another 200 left in you still? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. 300. <laughs> <laughs> I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Rob, uh, you play Falco. Uh, explain to our listeners and our viewers what the show is all about, because we know all the songs. Well, I think when Jim originally wrote the, the album Bat Out of Hell, it was originally for a theatrical piece, as you hear in every song from Jim. And it's, um, I would say it's a mixture between Peter Pan and Romeo and Juliet. There's a lot about that Lost Boys kind of thing where they're frozen at 18 or younger and then you've got the Captain Hook characters like the Falcos which is basically the ones who are um, the wasted youth they've kind of just got older and had families and it's that kind of feud between families but it's like a love-hate thing I would also say to anybody who wants to compare it with something it's like a marriage of Rocky Horror and We Will Rock You and the baby is that out of hell. Is it daunting to perform these songs? Uh, I mean, you know, people know the words, they know, <laughs> know everything about this. There's even a warning to stay in your seats during the show because people love this music so much. Uh, daunting? Yeah, daunting, amazing as well at the same time. I always love that reaction from the audience as the beginning chords play on the piano, you hear that <gasps> from them and that's an experience like no other. And I think daunting more so now since we lost Jim and me over the last year, I think that means now we feel that we need to carry their legacy. So even more daunting than before, but also amazing that people are finding their music again. What surprises you about this show? Because, you know, doing a musical, you're doing the same thing night after night, but I can see that there's something that lights up in all of your eyes when you're on stage. But what's the biggest surprise when you get out there? Um, I would say, besides the audience's response, um, the cast on stage, we have such a great time on there, and I think it just changes every show. So it's, it's the excitement of seeing what people are going to do next that kind of keeps it exciting time after time, yeah. You mentioned before about the loss of the two greats that the reason why this musical exists is, is that something that you think that's going to keep this going for even longer than you expected? Yeah, I believe so, especially with like Netflix shows like Stranger Things taking songs from the yesteryear. I find that having children between 10 and 18 myself, that they love these old songs and like they're not old we don't say old old is bad <laughs> well you know they're, they're well david bowie to quote the great says their music has no age and um a good song's a good song and i feel that jim wrote so many good songs and people go oh my god did jim steinman write that whether it's all the songs that you hear in bat out of hell or like uh, um the celine dion songs in in bat out of hell for example or you've got the song which share uh, duetted with Meatloaf, Dead Ringer, and you go, oh my God, that's another Jim Steinman song. And to name just a few of these great hits, they are like a three-part uh, play in themselves. So I think that Jim hit something very special. And what I would have loved to have seen in my lifetime was Jim and Freddie Mercury write together, because I think that they were two of the greatest, um, how would you say, innovative songwriters of their time. Now, you're all coming to Dublin. That's why we're here. Uh, what are you looking forward to about... I'm sure you've all been to Dublin, but uh, is there anything in particular you've got to do when you hit to Dublin for Borgosh Energy Theatre? Oh, well, I love the zoo. Oh. I love Dublin Zoo. It's good zoo, I think. I was going to say Guinness. That's yeah. very... That's, <laughs> that's two very, Guinness, that, actually. Do. That's two very different things. The Guinness zoo. at the zoo. I don't know whether that's allowed, though. Well, the last time I was there, it was Christmas, so I got to see all that busk on um, Grafton Street, yeah. so that was pretty cool when all the legends of, of today's uh, um, 
rock stars come out and just do it for free for the homeless and stuff. But I love, just love being in the city. It's like whether you're on one side of the river or the other, there's such a difference in, in like the old school Dublin and the new school Dublin since the likes of, is it Facebook and Google and Amazon are all there now. So there's a lot of new money in Dublin and I just love being around there. I love the Irish. I'm together with an Irish girl, so an Irish gal. Irish, yeah. yeah, so. Guys, thank you so much. You must be buggered, like I said. It's such a great show, such a high energy show. It's such a spectacular afternoon and night out. Thank you so much. Thank nice you to meet you. Much.